Hey guys, and welcome back to Bed About Skin. In today's video, I want to share with you a skincare anti-haul. The new skincare products that are launching this month, but I won't be purchasing, and kind of the reasons why. I don't usually film this style of content here on Mad About Skin, because I like to focus on the positives, the products that I genuinely think are worth investing in. But, with the cost of living going up, up and up, I'd hate to think that you guys were investing your hard-earned coin in products that just won't live up to expectations, which is kind of the purpose of today's video. So sit back, relax, let's talk skincare launches I won't be buying. Now, before we get into this video, just a quick reminder to do all that YouTube -y stuff. If you like a good anti haul video and want to see more of this style of content on a monthly basis here on the channel, let me know by reaching down and giving this video a big thumbs up and a like. It's also a great way to support me and the channel because the more likes a video gets, the more widely YouTube distributes it on its platform. I would love to know any products that you've invested in, your thoughts, feelings, and opinions, so sound off in the comments section below and let's get that conversation going. But in true Mad About Skin style, let's just cut that waffle and delve straight on in. Now, I I think that might actually be the shortest intro I've ever managed here on Mad About Skin. So I think, you know, before I get sidetracked again, let's just delve in and talk to celebrity skincare launches that I'm definitely going to give a firm pass to. I'm talking about Skin by Kim and Road by Hailey Bieber. Let's start with Kiss Skin by Kim first. This is a new celebrity skincare launch by Kim Kardashian and it is taking the world by storm. Launched two days ago, I think, and it's all over YouTube, Instagram, Reddit. And say what you want about Kim Kardashian. She knows how to do a good launch. Sent out PR packages to just about everyone. So everyone's opening them, super excited, having their fangirl moment and saying how amazing these products are. I was offered the uh, PR package, turned it down uh, for a couple of reasons. I kind of think, unless I'm really going to like, enjoy and use the products, I usually turn the packages down because I don't want to create, you know, unnecessary waste where I'm not going to get through or use the products. But also I wanted to be able to be a little bit independent when it came to reviewing this. And that is really difficult if you're gifted products for free. You kind of don't want to be rude about them because it was a free gift if that makes sense. So clearly you know Skin by Kim have done the promotion and the launch of this to perfection but in truth these products are nothing nothing special and the sustainability issue really really bothers me. So the price point sky high for formulations that honestly aren't bad but you could get at the drugstore for a fraction of the cost. $60 for a hyaluronic acid serum? No. Go to the drugstore get your hyaluronic acid fix from like The Ordinary, Simple do a really great one, fraction of the cost. And then we come to the sustainability front and center in all of their marketing and yet this is one of the least sustainable brands I think I've ever found twice the amount of packaging as is actually required as the refills just work on their own so if you do want to try this brand out my plea to you would be buy the refills don't buy the originals because all you're getting is this bougie like bulky component to it the refills work as standalone products in their own right buy those save some of your hard-earned coin and actually be a little bit sustainable this no it's a firm pass I covered the reasons why I really dislike this brand and the sustainability issues in more detail in a video which I'll link up there when you come to Road by Hailey Bieber honestly I'm not mad at this skincare line. I actually think the price point is really, really affordable when you compare and contrast it to other celebrity skincare lines. It's not drugstore. But if you don't mind paying a little bit more for the name that's associated with it, I don't think this is a cash grab the way that the Skin by Kim is. I think this is actually quite well priced. You get choice in terms of fragrance and fragrance free, which really works for a lot of people. And I think the products actually are well formulated. This is streets ahead of the Kim Kardashian equivalent. But still, I just think, you know, ultimately, with the cost of everything going up at the moment, we can kind of invest this coin at the drugstore and get very similar outcomes. There's nothing really special here. Also, there's a few issues around the trade Mark, there's a clothing and indie clothing brand called Road, which are suing Road Skincare for infringing on their trademark, which they have, having worked for like 10 years on their indie brand. And that sits a little bit wrong with me. I don't know what the outcome of that's going to be. And you know, I'm not a lawyer or a professional in this field, but there's something about that that kind of, mm, and when people say maybe she didn't know that it was just the brand, well, apparently she's worn their clothing for like years. So clearly she knew. I don't know. It just doesn't sit right with me. I would say, whereas the Kim Kardashian one, avoid at all costs. The Road by Hailey Bieber, I think it'll come down to personal choice. If you did want to get one, I think their lip products look really, really good. And that's probably the standout for me of the collection. So you guys, when it comes to skincare, use what works for you. Now, moving from the celebrity through to the standard skincare, we're going to talk the Verst Weekend Glow Moisturiser. Now, this again is getting quite a bit of hype online, and I, I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with Verst. Some of their products are game-changingly good. I really like their retinol product. Some of them have just been a firm pass. I think this Weekend Glow Moisturiser is unfortunately going to be in the wah, 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 total fails category. Now, it's not a bad moisturiser, but there's so little vitamin C in here, I don't think it's actually going to do anything for your skin. And when, you know... The 
they're claiming that the glow is front and center on all of their marketing. I expected a little bit more in terms of the ingredient profile that's going to deliver that. So this is a 2% concentration of two different forms of stabilized vitamin C derivatives. Love my vitamin C derivatives, but 2%, it's going to take months and months to actually see some results in terms of your glow up and vibrancy in the skin from this product. I think you could get a much more affordable vitamin C derivative in a higher concentration and actually see some results. It's not a bad moisturizer. It's got some oils in here as well, which are going to add a little bit meaningful extra hydration than what you get from a standard moisturizer. But if you're using this for the glow, I think you'll be disappointed. And I'll leave a link to some of my favorite vitamin C derivatives in a video I did up there. Check Check those out you'll get a better glow from those don't turn your back on vitamin c derivatives but you kind of need a higher concentration than what you're getting with this product now we've got the paula's choice niacinamide five percent body serum so this this baffled me when i read this i thought really five percent so paula's choice have for years insisted on using higher concentrations of niacinamide ten percent they do a twenty percent beyond what studies have shown to be the most effective and the least irritating which is between three and five percent i always call this out and said you know what we should actually be using lower concentrations of niacinamide to get the very best results none of the associated redness peeling and irritation so when i saw that this one for the body is at a five percent concentration i'm a little bit baffled mainly because the body can actually tolerate more than the skin on our face traditionally can. So I'll be more likely to see a 10% concentration of niacinamide used on the body, 5% on the face. So they've kind of got this in reverse. I actually think this is a really, really good product. And if you want a 5% concentration of niacinamide in your skincare routine, you could absolutely use this on the face. There's nothing in here that means that you couldn't. So I'd say no to using it on the body. You could probably go a little bit higher or get a cheaper product. But if you want a 5% concentration of niacinamide in your facial skincare routine and you're still kind of struggling to find the right brand this could really work for you the only reason i'm not purchasing it is because niacinamide is in everything you don't need a standalone step and i find this very confusing as to what they're trying to achieve with it but again not a terrible product i just i'm just a bit confused as to where niacinamide is and sits within the whole paula's choice collection and the whole ethos and thinking when it comes to this ingredient Keeping with the old body, let's talk the Super Goop Glow Body Sunscreen. It launched this month, and honestly, I, I just I can't. I just can't get interested in Super Goop sunscreens. There are so, so many, and because all the packaging looks the same, it's really difficult to know what you're actually buying, how this is any different to the other sunscreens on the market. I just find the whole thing a little bit overwhelming. I don't know whether that's just me, but I go on their website, and I kind of don't know what to buy and what to try. And um, Super Goop do do some nice sunscreens, and most of their formulations are A+. But this body sunscreen, I don't know how this is any different to the rest of their sunscreens. It's not really clear in their marketing. And so I'm going to give this a firm, firm pass. Also, Supergoop are a US-based brand. And whilst, you know, I think it's nice that we have some more quality formulations in terms of sunscreens coming out of the US, you still are held back by the FDA rules that say you have to use very old style and traditional UV filters in your product. You can't take advantage of some of the newer technology that works better, gives you broader spectrum coverage, and feels better on the skin. So I always bear that in mind and think, why am I overpaying for Supergoop when I could invest in some of the European or Korean sunscreens that have better technology and feel better on the skin. This is always really what I comes back to. Now, if you are in the States and you don't want to shop or import from the US and from other territories such as Europe or Asia or Australia, then absolutely this could work really well as a body sunscreen. I just wish that Supergoop would do a little bit more to kind of differentiate their collection so we know what we're buying. And finally, we've got the Hero Mighty Patch for the face. Now, this, this baffle me. I like the hero spot patches i don't use them all the time because i find they're a little bit expensive and i don't think you know hydrocolo patches in terms of putting them over zits actually do a whole lot for my specific type of acne however they do definitely work for various other types of acne and people have great results with them i think primarily it stops you picking or touching spreading bacteria on the area because you've kind of got that cover also by applying some light pressure it can aid in healing and if they're medicated with things such as salicylic acid that has some beneficial um, ingredients in it too and i really do like the hero mighty patches in general they're one of the better like hydrocolloid spot treatments however this is designed as like an all-over face spot patch you don't need this. If your acne extends to the whole face, you're not actually spot treating. You need a really robust skincare routine to deal with that. A visit to the esthetician, dermatologist, kind of get on top of everything. We all get blemishes. We all get pimples, some more than others. And there's absolutely zero shame in that. And I think using a good spot patch can definitely, definitely help with that. You know, reduce some of the pain, the inflammation and the size of the zip. However, if your acne is quite widespread across large sections of the face, you can't treat that with just one spot patch. And I don't think 
that this is going to be adding a whole lot more. You really need to invest in your skincare routine and kind of work out what ingredients could help with that, possibly in collaboration with a dermatologist or other skincare professional. So for me, I see where they were going with this all over like spot patch, but no, it costs an awful lot as well. It's like $20. You don't need this. <laughs> this is like a firm pass. You know, stick to those hydrocolloid patches for the odd zit here and there. But if it's more widespread than that, you really need other treatments, not to just rely on covering them up with these medicated patches. So there you have it guys, a rundown of some of the new skincare launches this month, what I'm not going to be buying. Hopefully in this video you see it's not all negative. I do think all of these brands are bad and the products are bad. However, I just think, you know, for me there was nothing that excited me into wanting to buy them. Are you totally opposites? Do you really want to invest in any of the products mentioned today? Sound off in the comment section below and let me know. Here on Bad About Skin, it's all about using what works for you, investing in the brands that meet your budget, your ethos and what you want to get out of the products themselves. So I really want to get that conversation going wherever you are in the world guys stay safe stay well love your skin take care bye